I've heard horror stories where yeah. you don't get a lot of control. Yeah. You know, and they'll have people writing you the way that you're not. But it's so foolish, too, because of the person like you. It's so clear that you know what you're doing. Like, you've been doing it a long time. Just let her do it in the sense of a sitcom. Just and, get the pieces in play. And that's what I did. That's what I always tell them. I say, you know, one thing I know, Joe, is I know funny. I know me, and I know the type of funny that I'm trying to put out. And that's all I ask them, to move out the way and give me the space. You know, yeah. I don't I don't want to explain every joke to you. It, it might not be for you. Right. So, you know, that's one of the reasons why I'm really glad we at BET Plus, too, because we can be black as hell. <laughs> 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 I'm not in a room with a whole bunch of white execs who's scared to say nappy. <laughs> Are you allowed to swear? Can you say basically anything you we want? We say everything. It's... Bitch, that's... hoe, motherfucker, nigga. Oh, we say everything. We talk like Miss Pat talk for real. That's like amazing. families talk for real. Now, I will say this. Black folks do come out and say, she don't represent the black family. No, I don't represent you. I represent me. I'm not out here trying to recreate mm. your family. I, what I did was put my family on TV. And if your family can relate or if you can relate, then come on and get on this train, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I could, who couldn't relate? You guys do an amazing job of setting it up. Well, you know. It's you, a great show. Thank you. It really you. is. It's, it's, you know, and it's not a black show. It's a, it's a show about that relates to everybody. You yeah. know, from I have people from all walks of life walk up to me, tell me I download BET Plus just for you. I believe that. It's I, a very unique show. And it is. I mean, it's it's about your it's a, it's about the experience that I went through in life that relates to everybody. And it's the coolest thing when I see an old white dude and a old, a young hip black dude. They ain't got shit in common, but they both like Miss Pat. And when I go to the club and I perform, they'll both come up and say, "I love your show." And that's when I know. I said, "Oh, this shit ain't black. This shit for everybody." Yeah, that's beautiful. <laughs> I love when old ladies come up to me at like an airport and tell me they love the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> like old ladies. I had these old ladies. They were like in their eighties, man. You'd be surprised. I have white young white guys have a thing for me. Ah. <laughs> I don't know if they want a nanny or some old black pussy. <laughs> I don't know what they want, y'all. <laughs> Maybe both. <laughs> Maybe they both at the same time. They don't want my own shave on a regular, but oh, hey. Jesus. <laughs> I can't get into this new bald head vagina shit, Joe. No. no, I ain't got time for all that shit. I got a I got a uh, garage on top of my vagina. I ain't got time for pulling that shit back once a week to catch no hell. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy how the go the pubic hair thing just vanished. Like, these, everybody's had pubic hair. You watch the yeah. old porns? Well, For all of history, people had pubic hair. But back in the day, it made you look like you had a fat cat. Yeah. A fat pussy. Yeah. You, know, you put your underwear on your thick down there. Right. Now you put your underwear on it sticking to the vagina. I'm like, where did men get it to bald head pussy? It is weird, because I, I experienced it through high school. Yeah. Like when I was in high school, that's when porn fart first came out. When, the, when I was in high school was the first time VHS tapes came out so people could rent porn. Mm -hmm. And that's when the pubic hair thing changed. It changed first in porn, and it changed in everybody else. Well, I think what the problem was is um, black, black women, we have such beautiful black afros down there, mm. so you couldn't get the whole vision. So some white man went down there and got uh, vagina hair stuck in his throat, which I call nappy grip. <laughs> he thought the pussy was going to kill him, so it was a new rule. You got All pussies must be shaved. <laughs> That's just my thought, y'all. I don't know how true that is. <laughs> I dated this girl in high school, and she was kind of wild. And uh, she was dating this guy, and uh, she broke up with the guy, and her and I hooked up. And she she said, she goes, I'm embarrassed. I can't, I can't let you see me. I go, why? She goes, he made me shave my pussy, and I just started laughing. It was the funniest thing to me when I was like 16 years old. It was hilarious that someone uh, was ashamed that they had a shaved pussy. <laughs> Uh, I only do it when it get caught in the side of my underwear. <laughs> I've been with the same man 31 years. He didn't give a fuck if mine fall off and be on my kneecap. Baby, did you cook today? Or have you order Uber Eats? Or what show you want to watch? <laughs> That's why I don't cheat. I keep the same one I got, so I ain't got to get no new rules. No new problems. No new problems. Yeah, some people love problems. Some people do love problems. They I don't do. like problems. I'm not. I'm not a fan.
I, I just ask people to leave me the fuck alone, Joe. Yeah. Like, let me be me. I, you know, people always say, well, what do you think about the council culture? I said, shit, um, American Express been canceled me. So. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of you motherfuckers don't matter. They don't lower my limit. So, hey, it is what it is. <laughs> do, you th- do you think that a show like yours, could it, it's like in this day and age, it seems so hard to put one of those things together. Like, I don't know what, what it used to be every night on all the major networks. It was mostly sitcoms. Mm-hmm. It was Friends and Seinfeld and I was on one news radio. Mm-hmm. There was all these shows, Wings. There was all these shows. And there's fucking none of them now. There's so few. So when I see a show like yours come around and do it in a new way successfully and really get you, I'm like, this can be done. This can be done, and no comics are like trying to get sitcoms anymore. It's I, a not. It's not like a. Th- it used to be when I was in the '90s when I was out here. There was pilot season, mm-hmm. and everybody was just scrambling to get a sitcom. It was like the holy grails. Like we were all out here for the lottery. Like everybody was ready. We'd come out here for pilot season. Everybody would go to Hollywood. Yes. Now no one knows. It's fucking it's gone. Well, you don't need it anymore. You have stuff like podcasts. You can yeah. create your own stuff to, you know, with no rules that will blow you the fuck up. But when I see someone doing something like you're doing, I go, there's still room for that funny sitcom. It can still be done. It's still a great thing to watch. One of the things that I tell you that I ran into uh, with building a sitcom is like writers. So you deal with the writers that been in Hollywood so long and they stuck in this box. Yeah. Like we, I literally had writers say they're never gonna let you do that, and I'm like they're gonna let me do me. They yeah. hired me. You knew what the fuck you was getting when you gave me that first deposit. And I told you I ain't get hit with no pie and I ain't chasing no dick like they say fat girls do. I've been having sex since sixth grade. Two things I told Hollywood. You can never give me as much money as I can steal from you. Now let's make this show. So a lot of... <laughs> I think a lot of writers are just stuck inside stuck. the box and they just recycle the same fucking joke. If yeah. I heard it, I don't want it. Yeah. If it's close to what I've heard before in the barber shop on another show, I'm like, get that shit out of here. Let's go back to the drawing board. And that's one of the things we write on the flow. A joke, I'd be like, I heard that shit. You, I'm a comedian. You can't give me nothing I ain't heard. I don't heard it from the white side to the black side to any other side because I play both sides of the ring. So you can't pull that shit off on me. And a lot of times I'm like, no, nah, I'm not doing that wacky shit, mm. hacky ass shit. We ain't doing that. 